While I was doing the research for my Bob Daisley video, I stumbled into an article on NotTravel.com that said that every bass player should learn how to play Crazy Train. According to No Treble, bass player Bob Daisley manages to fit just about every style of rock bass line into this song. Well, let's have a look. I, I, the intro is pretty simple, four groups of two eighth notes underlining the three main chords of the section, F sharp minor, A major and E major. But when the guitar comes in, things get interesting. Let's have a look at the isolated riff. Don't you think there's something missing? Randy Rhodes' riff doesn't really move from the F sharp minor chord, so it's the bass underlining different notes that creates the melodic movement of the opening section. Probably what Randy had in mind when he came out with the riff was this. My take is that Bob came up with the changing chords and it sounded so good that they decided to keep it for the intro. Next section is the verse. The song is in the key of F sharp minor. The intro, the chorus and the solo part all revolve around an F sharp minor chord. But the verse is based around an A major chord, the relative major of our F sharp minor. In fact, after the dark sounding intro, things go immediately very happy. On the first part of the verse, the bass is playing punctuated quarter notes. That is one of Bob Daisley's favorite moves and really sets the pace of the section. On the second half of the verse, the bass adds an upbeat descending major scale, A, G sharp, F sharp and E, which has a little bit of a disco feel, really underlining the major quality of the verse. The scale happens all on the upbeat, while the pumping A's keep coming on the downbeat to keep the rhythm grounded. So the bass is providing a melody on top of the pedal tone, acting like two instruments at the same time. This note sequence is very similar to the descending chord progression that the guitar is playing on the first part of the verse. So Daisley is pretty much responding to the guitar, creating a beautiful combination with Randy and Ozzy's vocals. Next is the chorus. On the first and third bar, the bass follows the guitar. On the second and fourth bar, Bob takes advantage of the space left by the vocals and the guitars who's playing harmonics and adds a little chromatic scale, again responding to the lead vocals. Then it's two more bars following the guitar and then it's the Daisley lick which I mentioned in my Bob Daisley bass habits video. This is one of Bob's trademark moves, it's pretty challenging to play and once again it responds to the lead vocals. Being basically a one note based lick, it doesn't get in the way of the little solo that Randy's playing. The obviously was Randy bringing in the riffs, Desley's superb work makes this song a little jewel and I guarantee you it wouldn't sound so cool without all these little and subtle arrangements. Last, let's take a look at the guitar solo. While Randy does his thing, Bob pulls out this incredible descending 16 notes pattern, changing completely the rhythm figure and giving a whole new flavor to the section that underlines in the best possible way the masterpiece guitar solo. Not only, but the descending bass line 
provides an exceptional counterpoint to Randy's ascending scales. The rest of the song just repeats the first three sections, and I had to say that Bob is really a very tidy player. Every verse and every chorus is played almost identical, a quite unusual trait for 1980. So let's have a look at the whole song from the perspective of the bass line. We have melodic definition in the intro, pumping quarter notes, pedal tone and lead parts in the verse, chromatic 8 note scales responding to the vocals in the chorus and 16 notes pattern providing counterpoint during the solo. I haven't even talked about the monster tone Bob has on this album and how tight he is. Though Crazy Train is not an easy track to play on bass, I wouldn't call it difficult either. But from a melodic and songwriting point of view, it's a masterpiece. So yeah, it's pretty much every style of rock bass into one song. And yes, every bass player should learn how to play Crazy Train. Thank you very much for watching, let me know what you think about this type of video in the comments and don't forget to follow me on Instagram.